Frank Pope here in Silver Lake, Wisconsin at West Tech Automotive where I'm replacing my MSD 6A box with the new programmable 6 digital box. We're going to see if it makes a difference on the dyno and I'm here with the top wrench of this company, Jim Daly. Jim, basically what are you going to do here? Explain uh, basically what you expect to get out of the engine. Well, we're going to figure out what we had with the original 6 box. Um, the digital box, with it being programmable, allows us to fine-tune the, the, the timing curve for the, for the system, which will give it, you know, it'll allow it, we'll be able to program exactly where it wants to be. If the engine will tell us where it wants to be timing-wise, bring the timing in as it's needed, um, take advantage of MSD's newest technology with it all being digital and potted versus the, the six box that was there. Plus, you'll have the built-in rev limiter, a little bit of a safety feature for any of the cars that are out there nowadays, it'll take better advantage of the, the fuels that are out there. And I understand you take the springs and weights right out of the distributor? You can do that. I mean, that's something we'll look at and see if that's something we need to do. If we need to lock the timing in the distributor and let the control box do all of the work, or if we're going to work with the vacuum part of the new box versus the mechanical advance that's in the distributor. We'll weigh both of those options. So what do you uh, believe we're going to get out of all of this? It's, it's, it's really hard to say what we're going to actually wind up getting or gaining out of it. Um, you're going to gain a more reliable spark. You're going to gain a better spark um, with the MSD stuff. It's some of the best stuff that's out there um, as far as ignitions are concerned and that we found on the dyno. Um, we've never had a problem with any of the MSD stuff that we've ever used. And we find that this MSD programmable 6AL2 is the most versatile for a street-driven car. So we're going to find out exactly what we do gain out of it. <laughs> okay, and and probably some economy as well because it's going to burn. It'll it'll burn more efficiently. Um, we'll get it in dialed in with the carburetor and see where we're at with that, with the timing advance, and with the program that we can put into the MSD box. Okay, let's do it. It is fair to say that the wires are are different than the analog, and right now. We're going through each wire to make sure everything goes in the proper location. Once fitted, we'll fire the car up, take it to the dyno, and see if there's any improvement. Just plugged in the distributor wire, the trigger wire. It runs to the distributor, right, Jim? Yes. It's the only wire that runs. It's a purple and green wire from MSD that picks up the magnetic pickup inside the distributor and signals the box one to fire. And now we're putting, what, the hot leads? This is the battery feed lead for the new MSD box and key on 12 volt power lead which will connect to where the original one was. It's the two coil leads and the um, magnetic pickup out of the MSD distributor. We're down to the last bit of getting the wiring hooked up. Um, we eliminated all the original wiring that he had in there the double wires trying to power a single wire and it made it all into a nice loom so it was all neat and clean wrapped it in the corrugated plastic all the way up to the distributor making sure that the trigger wires and the uh, power wires were kept separated kept as a twisted pair to keep EMI down to a minimum the last connection we have left is the the main battery or the main feed ground up in the front of the car where the new box is installed and we'll be ready to give it a fire and see where we're at And we put a brand new MSD coil on. What we've done now is in order to take full advantage of the MSD2 programmable's um, timing functions, one of the things we need to do is lock out the timing in this. What that involves is removing the distributor from the engine, which we've already done. We're going to remove the rotor, the fly weights, the springs. We drive the roll pin out of the gear, pull the shaft up about two inches, 
spin it around so that it goes into the locked out position. That way there's no mechanic, there's no centrifugal advance left in the distributor. All the timing controls are going to be handled by the programmable box and the program that we put in it. Distributors in the vise. Remove the rotor. These are the weights that we're going to remove in the springs that handle the centrifugal advance. They pretty much just pop right off. They will not be reused. They will not be going back in the distributor. The next step now that we have all of this off of here, you can see right now that the weight plate moves against the center shaft. What we're going to be doing is, is when we pull this up and spin it 180 degrees, there's another hole on the other side of this lock plate. When I get it apart, I'll show it to you. But that pin will go down in there and it'll eliminate all of this movement, which controls the amount of timing at centrifugal advance, which is going to be handled by the MSD2 programmable. Put your own split window on the back of that. This is where we're going to remove the, the centrifugal advance mechanism. As you can see, we still have the movement here. So what we're going to do is we slide the shaft up. And you can see the hole on this side, right here. And what we're going is we're going to spin this 180 degrees. Okay, now we've removed the stop bushing that comes with the distributor, the nut and the washer that were on there, so that we can turn the shaft and it slides right down into that hole and can be re right back assembled. Now there is no movement in the lock plate. So we've eliminated, we've locked out the distributor timing, so there's no centrifugal advance left in here. It's all going to be controlled by the MSD box. That'd be my Roadrunner with my next choice. Okay, distributor. Is this in the way? Oops. Yeah, go ahead. I'm still not down all the way. Cap is back on. Lock down. If it's stainless steel, Looking it down snug. You never have to move that distributor again. Now that we got the distributor back in, we've got it close on timing. We're going to finalize the timing on the dyno. Um, but let's see if all of our wiring checked out and everything worked the way it should. It should start right up for us. Unbelievable. So far, so good. We'll get her over on the dyno and see where we're at from there. Now the car is on the dyno. So we can program the new MSD box. We've got the car strapped into the dyno, we've got the gas analyzer hooked up. We made our basic connections to the engine so that we can read them off the dyno parameter. We're on a Mustang chassis dyno. Um, right now, we, as the timing has been locked out, we've set a, a projected base timing of 36 degrees. And we're now in the process of using the disc that came with the programmable tool, loading it into the laptop to be able to lay out the timing curve because the programmable tube cannot anticipate what's going to happen it sets it can only pull away as it's happening so you set your base timing at the high end and then you're able to pull timing back as needed um, as soon as we can get some results of where we're at with that we'll get the base timing locked in um, and make sure we can get back to what we want to be as a base timing during crank somewhere around 17 18 degrees then we can take it from there
what are you going to do here? We're going to do a, a, a horsepower pull just to see where we're at with this uh, with the carburetor that we have on here now with the new ignition system. And the MSD? With the MSD. Um, and we'll see where we're at with it compared to where we were at with Final results are kind of in um, with this carburetor and the new MSD ignition box and the ignition coil. Um, a little fine tuning on the carburetor, setting the timing curve where it seems to be most appropriate. We picked up about 15 horsepower. We may have given up a little bit of torque, but that may have been quality of the fuel from four years ago when we were here last time with it. Um, feel real positive with where it's going. Um, we do have some more testing plan. Um, I consider it a success that the digital MSD box over the analog box certainly helped with the with the higher end horsepower. Horsepower came in a little bit sooner than what the other box did. Um, well, I feel that we we, we, we we achieved our goal of gaining power with just an ignition change without changing anything else. And my name is Jim Daly and you're watching Vester.com.